So if you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll bring it back in. Sign up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'll please remain standing, and we'll have a moment of silence for the victims of the Parkland School shooting in Florida. Thank you. Clerk, if you'll please call the roll and read the uh, prepared announcement. February 27, please be advised, this meeting is being taped for audio and video broadcast. The meeting will be closed captioned, so it's important that everyone speak clearly into the microphones and only one person speak at a time. Assisted listening devices are available. Thank you. When you call the names, it's got to be loud so they may hear outside if they're out there. Greg Burnett. Present. Mr. Porcello. Here. Mr. Sacinelli. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Stern. Here. Ms. Melendez. Here. Ms. Urinides. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. <laughs> That's twice I did that. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Ms. Bowman. Mr. Sims. Mr. Kites. Present. Ms. Siegelbaum. Here. <clears throat> Mr. Hempstead. Here. Mr. Serenides. Here. Mr. Ignary. Here. Mr. Livingston. Here. We have a quorum. 13 present. We have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is the acceptance of the minutes from the regular meeting of February 13th, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Agneri moves. Any deletions, additions, corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Somebody motion carries. Somebody lean on the light. <laughs> We're not trying to kick you out. <laughs> uh, now, the next item on the agenda is public participation. Now normally the council rules, well the council rules call for a three minute limitation and in the past because we don't always have a full house uh, we allow for some latitude but tonight we're because there are so many people that want to speak we're going to have to ask that you keep your minute uh, your uh, comments to three minutes. Uh, the city clerk will be keeping the timing. When you have 30 seconds left, she'll raise her hand and ask that you wrap up your comments. I know a lot of you will have the same comments, so if you can keep that in mind, that there are other people behind you who want to speak as well. <coughs> so, city clerk. Yes, um, Michael Barbas. <clears throat> Good evening to all NPS stakeholders. I'm Mike Barbas. I'm the chairman of the Board of Ed. I'm here representing our nine board members. We are elected city representatives. We're elected to oversee the running of the school. We've got 11,550 students, close to 800 teachers, and other 500 employees. We represent all of Norwalk's 85,000 residents who benefit from our schools, our facilities, and our reputation. We consume about 60% of the city's budget. This year, $184 million. We're not a foreign entity. We are not a rival to the city, but we are part of the city. This is not North Korea versus South Korea. This is Norwalk. Too frequently, we hear these comments about them, our, their budget, their staff, their central office. I've been elected for seven years now, and I've regularly heard this us versus them attitude. I would love to know why we're being punished by the city when we are part of the city. Why are we being attacked trying to build the best school system possible for Norwalk? One day, somebody on the city side will have to explain that to me. But that brings me to the budget. Despite our recent track record of improvement, where we have shown the first 
uh, results from the implementation of our strategic plan. The city's Common Council Finance Committee only approved a five and a half million dollar increase this year for next year, which would only cover our contractual improvements or contractual costs and only one of our seven goals of our strategic operating plan. At a bare minimum, we need seven million dollars to make progress without drastic cuts. So I'm asking the Common Council to add an additional million and a half dollars so that we can hit that seven million dollar figure. We cannot hit all of the goals of our plan, all of our initiatives, with just the one five, and there will still be major cuts, and we will have to delay the implementation of parts of our plan. But we can at least continue to make some progress. Next year, because of this, we'll have to ask for more money than we planned. We had thought maybe three and a half percent, but it's going to be definitely five percent. We'll be just kicking the can down the road. I know it's not the Board of Ed's call about using the rainy day fund, but if one tapped it slightly, you could keep that tax increase to the 3.7 target you talked about. These are taxpayer dollars that have been collected that are sitting in the city's books. Um, and there would still be plenty in the rainy day fund for next year for state cuts or issues connected to next year's revaluation. The strategic operating plan, our initiatives, have produced all sorts of positive outcomes, and those will only continue. The investment is paying off, as you can see from our improvements with the state accountability indices. 30 seconds. At, at this point, we are only 3.6% from Wilton, and we can close that gap with these investments. Norwalk is having a good year. Our economy is in good shape. The rainy day fund is in good shape. Everyone behind here has Wrote, wrote, ran on a campaign of investing in education. I think you need to honor that commitment. We are not North Korea. We shouldn't be as such. The bottom line is you get what you pay for. And we have proven ourselves, and we deserve that extra $1.5 million. Thank you. Mayor Rilling, Council President Kaides, um, members of the Common Council. We um, find ourselves in a bit of a distressing position tonight. Uh, Norwalk City Government has submitted a 2018-19 budget increase request of 5.2%. <clears throat> of Education has submitted a budget increase request of 5.4%. The city increase has been fully funded by using a one-time pension fund savings of over two million and two million of fund balance, also known as the rainy day fund. Board of Education funding has been left hanging, dependent on a tax increase to fund its budget increase. This is a divisive strategy and one that imperils the continued progress and improvement of our schools. This is why we are here tonight, to appeal to you directly. I'm sure different people will approach the issue of school funding from different perspectives tonight. I want to share with you the expenditures of surrounding uh, school districts <clears throat> that we are competing with. Now, as you, and by the way, all of our slides are in front of you this evening uh, for reference, as well as the results of our state accountability plan, which I'm sure will be referenced tonight uh, as, as well. Um, as you know, Stanford is the city that is most like Norwalk. It's in our state reference group and the most similar to us in size and socioeconomic factors. Stanford invests $1,600 more per student in its schools. This comparison to Stanford is very meaningful to us since Norwalk students just surpassed Stanford students in student achievement as measured by the 12 factors of our state accountability plan. I hope this suggests to you the funding you provide for education is being used effectively. The school districts that border Norwalk, who we compete with families for, invest almost $3,000 more per student students than Norwalk, while we have 10 times the number of high-need students, 6% versus 60%.
You have 30 there are, seconds. There are some things that these districts offer that our students also need to thrive and further improve. These are in our strategic operating plan and reflected in our budget goals for 1819. They are equity measures that our students, all students, deserve. The lack of these enabling conditions reflect the historic underfunding of education in Norwalk. For example, our students need and deserve a high school program of study of 26 credits uh, to graduate, the state and national standard, instead of 20 and fewer study halls, <clears throat> similar to other communities in Fairfield County. Our students need even deserve music lessons in the fourth and fifth grades that students enjoy in our neighboring districts. Our students need and deserve a full measure of instruction that comes with a normal elementary school day similar in length to what students experience in surrounding school districts. The city is growing and thriving, and we are the only growing school district in Connecticut. Growth is a good thing because it enables you to offer more and better services. But growth, if not managed properly, can also adversely change a city. Everything that the Board of Education is doing in, this, in its strategic operating plan is designed to maintain our current level of diversity as the city grows. While millennials living in apartments will be an important economic element in our city's future, we have to be able to attract and retain families with children who buy homes and choose Norwalk schools to educate their children. Our definition of the best city school system in Connecticut is one in which every child, regardless of race, ethnicity, first language, or income, can get a first class education and go to college, simply because they grew up in Norwalk and attended effective schools that offered a competitive, edu competitive educational opportunities. Growth gives us the opportunity for Norwalk to be known for its quality of life, defined by quality of education for all children and to be the best in the state in meeting diverse individual student needs. <clears throat> At the end of the day, when our watch uh, is over, it will be more important to future generations that the city be known for the quality of schools than the size of its fund balance. Thank you for your service and thoughtful decision making in the best interest of our school children. go any further there's another sheet out there somewhere can we have it and out of respect for dr adamowski's position we allowed him to go on beyond well beyond the three minute limit but we are going to have to ask everybody else to stay within three minutes kristen karsnick we're not say anything good evening can you hear me Yes, I'm Kristen Karschmidt. The you might want to pull the microphone down just a bit. I'm a little shorter. <laughs> Kristen Karschmidt, the uh, Norwalk Public Schools Budget Finance Director, and I want everyone to look at the screen and follow along. It's some of the metrics and numbers I'm going to refer to as I speak to you this evening. Very recently, the Next Generation Accountability Report was released by the State of Connecticut. It is a broad set of 12 indicators that helps tell the story of how well a school is preparing its students for success in college, career, and life. For 16-17, the School Accountability Index was 76.9% for Norwalk, as you can see on the screen. This equates to a growth increase of 5.8% overall versus 15-16. When analyzing this increase, we realized that it was directly correlated to the targeted spending areas in our strategic operating plan. Academic return on investment or educational productivity in simple terms is calculated as a learning increase. This is a way to view investment in terms of student learning, which is also tied to higher graduation rates. In this example, the point increase of 56.6, .6, as you can see there, is related to school accountability points. This increase can then be multiplied by the number of students in your district, 11,000, a little over 11,000, and then divided by net investment dollars of approximately two and a half million, as you can see on the bottom. This equals a 26% academic return on investment overall. This measure equates to approximately 11% return on investment for every million dollars invested in the 16-17 school year. There's only one other district in our DRG or district reference group that yields any type of ROI at all, and the return is not even close to what we are seeing for Norwalk. 
In addition, all other districts are showing a negative return within our DRG, and 72% of districts statewide had a decline in the accountability index, with Wilton specifically experiencing a 5.8% decline year over year. Such a large increase from one year to the next is evidence-based that we are realizing a dramatic return on the city's investment, which in turn maximizes the potential for student growth. We strongly believe that this well-thought-out strategic plan is indeed working. We only get one chance to improve the trajectory of our student learning. We strongly believe that the continued partnership between the city and the school will yield equitable results with this requested level of spending. You will not just be throwing funding at our schools, but rather investing in a plan that is a well thought out plan. As seen by recent financial reporting that has come from our school business office, we have, have goals seconds. and we are well governed and managed in our <clears throat> finances. We have a strong handle on our school finances and are fiscally responsible with our citizens' money. <clears throat> Overall, it is not just about spending more in total that we're trying to do. It's about having and executing a strategic operating plan where we spend efficiently and effectively with measured goals that we can, can and did achieve. If we do not have sufficient funding above contractual increases, we cannot continue with this momentum of increasing student achievement. In a study I recently read when I was doing some budget findings, the findings showed that districts that perform well in achievement also share a number of values, including creating measured goals, having strong community support, and a willingness to make tough choices to better the community as a whole and give students what they really deserve. Thank you. Adam Blank. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Adam Blank. I'm a parent of a second grader at Columbus Magnet, and I'm the co-president of the PTA there at Columbus. Um, first, I just wanted to thank you all for what you've done over the last couple of years, I think, for the school districts. And obviously, the Board of Ed and Dr. Adamowski have played an integral role, but so have you, and you've, you, you've done quite a bit of capital improvement funding and helped us on the way with the strategic operating plan. and. And I'm grateful for that, and I think that there's a real sense of pride in the community now about the school system that I don't think was there a few years ago. Um, and I don't know exactly what the funding should be and what prior, what, what, what's worthwhile and what's not, and I'm sure you're gonna hear plenty about that from others tonight, but what I just wanted to raise with you, and they've put up nicely for me, um, I put together a little spreadsheet that's not perfect, and, and you could quibble, quibble about some of the numbers in there, but, but the, I took the average home values off of Zillow that Zillow lists for the average home price in any of the surrounding municipalities. I took the, the current mill rates from the Office of Policy of Management, and you put, you put those two numbers together and you get an average uh, tax burden on the single family home uh, in most of the towns in Fairfield County. And what you'll see is that Norwalk is darn near the lowest tax burden per family of, of any of the towns in Fairfield County. In fact, we're about $3,500 less in taxes per, per single family house than uh, the rest of the Fairfield County. And if you actually compared us to the, the towns that abut us, the Darien, New Canaan, Wilton, Westport, our taxes are about half of what they pay. So again, for the in the average single family house. Now obviously if you live in those communities, your house is probably worth more. So but but the, the taxes paid are going to be almost double in all of our communities for your, your average family. So and I've seen so much in the press about people are being driven out of Norwalk because of the onerous tax burden and, and it's it's terrible. It's it's killing the city. Um, but that's just not true. No, nobody's leaving Norwalk to go to another town in Fairfield County where property taxes are lower because they're not. It's just it's it's. it's Thirty seconds. It, that's not the case, and in fact, our mill rate is also under the average amongst our competitors, and and so I think that we can certainly withstand over the the next coming years to continue to uh, increase the mill rate to fund the Board of Ed. And uh, thank you for your time. David Hoovelman. 
Members of the council, uh, thank you. Mayor, thank you. I am a parent of a special needs child in the district, and I'm a part of an organization called SPED Partners. We drafted a letter which we sent to all of you uh, earlier today, and it outlines our concerns for this budget. And I'm not going to speak about that letter in specific. I am going to speak to you as a parent of a child in the Norwalk School District. I'm going to speak to you as a parent of a special needs child. And I'm going to speak to you as a taxpayer in Norwalk. As a taxpayer, I am seeing value of the money being spent. I'm seeing the improvements that you have funded translate to real gains. Look at the state accountability numbers. This district is growing. These are positives and we need more. By your commitment to funding these increases in the budget over the past years, we have a clear and solid strategic plan that is moving us forward. As a taxpayer, seeing this value that you have helped create, I do not have a problem with the increases that translate to common gain and value to our city. Please find a way to come closer to the $9.9 .9 million increase that was requested. The bottom line, the bottom line is $5.5 million will translate to cuts in the growth and will cause us to detract from our gains. Remember also that the rainy day fund is tax dollars, my tax dollars. Please consider the proposal that we put forth and others have put forth of taking $1.5 million of that fund to get us closer to a $7 million number, which will help us to stave off cuts that will dramatically decrease our educational system. This is the benefit for our future, our children. And lastly, as a parent of a special needs child, I implore you to keep the commitment to appropriate $1.2 million to the third year of the Special Education Fund. We, we are now seeing the beginning of the benefits of that money spent in the improvements to special education in the district. With your continued support to that agreed upon appropriation, we have the opportunity to bring more inclusive programming and training into our district and make Norwalk a special education model in Connecticut. I'm a consumer of education and I like where we're going, but let's keep going there. Thank you for your time. If I might, um, I, I truly appreciate the applause for the speakers, but as you're giving them that round of applause, it's cutting into their time. So I know it's tempting if we could hold off a little bit and allow them their full three minutes. Thank you. MJ Sharona. Good evening. My name is MJ Corona and I've resided at 21 Geneva Road over the past 22 years. My daughters have attended the Norwalk Public Schools for the past 20 years and currently two of my daughters attend Ponus Ridge Middle School. A couple of weeks ago I sent a letter asking you to approve the Board of Ed $194 million request and I'm here tonight to ask you to fully fund the $9.9 .9 million increase for the Board of Education. First, I'd like to thank you for approving the 5.5 million increased last Thursday. And now I would actually like to tell you why the Common Council and the Mayor and the Board of um, Estimate and Taxation need to allocate 4.4 million from the Rainy Day Fund towards the Board of Ed request. As I stated in my letter, the investment in our school district and our children is critical for our city and our future generation of leaders. We finally have a Norwalk Public School strategic operating plan that is producing positive results at all school levels. We need to continue to invest in our money into school goals and objectives that are transforming our school district into the best city school system in Connecticut. 
And as a parent for the past 25 years with kids in the school district, for 20 years, I have seen in the past five years amazing, <coughs> amazing work done by the city. Um, so I'm going to share a story with you about why we should allocate the 4.4 million difference. <clears throat> 30 years ago, I helped my father, Michael McKinnon, start a small business called Independent Bond and Investment Consultants. It actually is IBIC and is still in existence. Recently, my father sold his business and retired. However, he still has a wealth of knowledge since he worked with municipalities for over 30 years on financing municipal bonds. Over the years that I've lived in Norwalk, my dad and I have had heated discussions during budget season about why we can or cannot take money out of our rainy day fund. And he's actually worked with many cities on telling them how much they need to have in their rainy day fund. So right now he's retired and he's no longer a consultant, but he has been my consultant over the past for my whole lifetime. <laughs> so he would tell me the AAA rating is very important. 10% of total expenditures for the RDF, the rainy day fund, is a good target for Norwalk. But if you get below 10%, it could impact the AAA rating. Do not reduce the fund balance to less than 10%. How long? 30 seconds, 20 okay. So even though he's retired, I asked him about Norwalk's financial situation. I actually called him yesterday, and he was having lunch with Jack Miller, who used to be our director of finance. So they had a good laugh when I, was, I sent him all the numbers. Um, I think he thinks Norwalk is in very good financial shape. He also told me the city of Norwalk has worked hard to get where it is financially over the last 30 years. So don't blow it now, is what he said. And he said that every year. <laughs> However, this time, our rainy day fund has grown, so the balance is way above the 10% of total city expenditures, and the city is in a great place financially. Your time is up. So this is why I believe we should draw down $4.4 million for the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to murder this one. Tiffany Karyavitis. How close? Call the second person so we can move it also. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, the next person after that is Jennifer Jeffries. So Tiffany. <clears throat> Which call the first three? I'm line up. Gonna call me. I call them. Oh, what you call the first three? Good evening, Common Council. My name is Tiffany Kirikides. I'm going to keep this short, simple, and sweet. Uh, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of three daughters at Tracy Elementary School. I am here speaking on behalf of Tracy and the entire city of Norwalk. And um, I also sit on the Governance Council in Tracy, and I, I wanted to make a few points on behalf of our school. Tracy is one of the six schools who are slotted to have the additional 30 minutes added to our day. Our students have had, who have many diverse needs really need this extra time to make a significant, excuse me, I'm nervous, to make significant gains. At Tracy, those 30 minutes will be used to increase reading instruction in grades K through two, allowing teachers to have time to do meaningful read alouds and build connections through text. In grades three to five, students will have the opportunity to have experiential science labs where they can learn the new standards and build models. This will also provide Tracy with an additional special area teacher that will work to incorporate more of our character education curriculum. We have now built some momentum as a district and we need to continue the progress schools like Tracy have made under the strategic plan. We have moved to category two school. We have worked so hard. Our kids have been working so hard. We've managed to close our gaps. We have a great momentum. Our kids are ready and excited to go to school. They feel good, they feel proud, they feel excited. We have to keep this going, this flow, this movement. I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the parents in Norwalk, all the schools have made great gains. As a taxpayer, I want my money to go to supporting our children and the future of Norwalk. These are our future leaders. We need to support this budget. Please take our money from the rainy day fund and put it towards our children. That's all we ask. Jennifer 
Jennifer Jeffries, followed by Medar Thomas, and it seems to be a, a co-speaker, Sonara Feos. Uh, good evening. I am Jennifer Jeffries. I reside at 59 <coughs> Russell Street. Uh, my son is a second grader at Marvin Elementary School. My daughter will be a kindergartner there next year. I'm the co-chair of our school governance council and an active member of our PTA executive board. I spoke recently at the public meeting in regards to the 2018-2019 school budget, and I am uh, speaking again this evening to reiterate the plea that I made at the meeting on Thursday evening. We need you to fully fund our budget. As a taxpayer in Norwalk since 2011, I respect and appreciate your efforts to keep the mill rate at 3.7%. However, with $15 million in the rainy day fund, it appears that both the schools and the taxpayers could benefit from the decisions that you make here this evening. As a taxpayer, I implore you to think about not just keeping our tax rates low, but also in investing our schools in order to, to attract financially stable families who are interested in buying property and staying in Norwalk to raise their families. We cannot expect that families will choose to live in Norwalk without a strong school system for them to rely on. Currently, our schools are in the midst of the strategic operating plan, which is working. Our schools are showing progress across the board, and the schools need the funds to continue in this direction. Without full funding, our schools will face drastic cuts, such as the elimination of kindergarten aides, the continuation of high school students sitting in multiple study halls, and an inability to extend the school day to six and a half hours for elementary schools. The increase in the budget that was requested last year and is being requested this year is really what is needed to catch Norwalk up to schools that are in the surrounding towns. In the past, Norwalk has spent less money per pupil than most surrounding towns, and our children have actually been in school for less time than neighboring districts. Finally, our city and our schools are poised to right these wrongs and to move forward in a positive tra trajectory. This is a time to invest in our schools and our children. How can we possibly sit on $50 million in the rainy day fund and invest none of that money in our children? I ask you once again to reconsider your position and fully fund our schools for the 2018-2019 school year. Thank you. Good evening. Following, following this duo, we have Eric Nieder, Niederer. Can you please speak up louder, Ms. King? Eric Niederer. Okay, good evening. Let me begin since I know that we are short on time. I will begin by saying how moved I am to see so many of my parents here. Um, Brookside is a wonderful place because Brookside, I think, is a microcosm of what Norwalk is. We are an incredibly diverse school that um, represents everybody that you will see within your community. When I came to Norwalk three years ago, Dr. Adamowski and his team were first on the scene, and I will tell you what I found at Brookside was a wonderful place, much like our elementary schools, but there just were no systems. The growth had become stagnant, and it took a strategic plan. It took scheduling, block scheduling, um, training teachers, training our paraprofessionals. It took resources to get us out of that stagnant state that we were in. For the last three years, we have increased um, every single year, surpassing the state's growth rate. and. We share that story with many of the other elementary schools. And I just wanted to say that to invest in our schools is really an investment in our city. If we look to our neighbors in the north, that's what they have done, and that's why those states have the values that they have for their homes. So investing in our schools and investing in our children truly is an investment in our future. Good evening. Last year, when I spoke to the Common Council to consider fully funding the schools, I opened with a one-liner that drew lots of laughter. I'm moving to Norwalk because of the schools, said no parent ever. <laughs> it was a good one-liner, but as I reflected upon it, I realized elements of truth in my statement. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the principal of an amazing school in town. I have the privilege and honor of working with dedicated individuals who do what they do because they swear their efforts are contributing to the proper formation of little people who will grow to be important, responsible, decision-making big people in a few years. We pay special attention to a theory called multiple intelligences. We all have strengths, and in order to get the best of our, out of our kids, we need to help them realize that untapped potential. 
We want to nurture it, grow it, and I want my little babies to draw upon these smarts interpersonal, linguistic, interpersonal, musical, logical, mathematic, naturalistic, spatial intelligence, bodily kinesthetic. These are theories that are put into action to help create the well-rounded and balanced child. Educating the whole child is not cheap. It costs. Professional development and materials cost. But if it's a priority for children in Wilton, Westport, New Canaan, and Darien, then I humbly ask you to support, I humbly ask for your support and understanding so that I can continue making the education of the whole child a priority for our children in Norwalk. I know that we're asking for a lot, but I'm the proud principal, not only am I the proud principal, but I'm also a dad of three little nutcases at home. And I believe that my children are worth every penny we're asking to make them just as competitive and well-rounded as their friends who live in Wilton, Darien, Weston, Westport, and Wilton. We are on the precipice of greatness. The pieces are in place. We possess the will. I need you to invest in our children and educators for the skill. I'm convinced very soon we will be hearing I'm moving to Norwalk because of the schools. In closing, please stop making me beg for something that should be a given. Investing in our children. One last statement while I have everyone here. There's no place for gun-toting educators in any school. That debate has to be shut down. Excuse me. After Eric, uh, we have Kareen Schweitzer and Joe Giandurka. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Niederer. I'm uh, co-chair of the School Governance Council at Fox Run, where I have two children, one here and one over there, a bigger guy. Um, I'm also the co-chair of SPED Partners. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a lifelong Norwalk resident, second generation. I've got my third generation right here with my wife, who's also second generation Norwalker. Um, I went through all the public schools, for those that don't know me. Um, and I got to tell you, I, I was going to go in a little different direction uh, when I was going to speak today. I was going to try and convince everybody as a taxpayer, as a voter, and I vote in every single election, including uh, the municipal elections, um, that you should look at the economics and that it makes economic sense for any naysayers that we should not fully fund the Board of Education budget. But I realized. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do it as a taxpayer, a lifelong Norwalk resident. Because I think everyone in this room has a mandate by your constituents. These people here, all you have to do is listen to the clapping and the cheering for every speaker that's come up. All of these people, I heard at last week's meeting that there wasn't a lot of people and that there was concern that the, that the uh, taxpayers who was not concerned about public education may be the louder voice. My children are here on a school night, and you're going to have to go to bed soon. Um, and I'm here racing down, not racing, from, from, uh, from New Haven to speak to all of you, like all of these parents, all these families, all these individuals, administrators, people in the Board of Education, people that are not involved in the Board of Education, to let you know that we do care, we are watching, we are listening, and that we are at a critical time right now to fully fund the Board of Education. There are great plans in Norwalk, but it needs the funding. I can tell you being a lifelong second generation Norwalker, public education, the budget has been, that can's been kicked time and time again. We are at a unique position in history in Norwalk, and we need the funding to facilitate the vision that's been set forth. And I have to tell you, I will talk about economics, because the one thing that always frustrates me is when people skimp a penny and they lose a dollar later. And that's what's occurred in Norwalk. 
We need to fund this now so it doesn't cost more money and that the programs that are being developed don't fall apart. Thank you. Hi, I'm Corrine Schweitzer of 25 Flicker Lane, and I'm the mother of three girls ages 10 to 16 who all started their academic careers at Row Eaton School. I'm here today to ask that the Norwalk Public School budget be fully funded by the city. Um, for full disclosure, I pulled my two older daughters out of the Norwalk Public School system in elementary school for a few reasons, but most importantly because I didn't have faith in the Norwalk Public School system. When my oldest daughter started kindergarten, Sal Corda was the superintendent of public schools, and during these past 11 years, I have lived through three superintendents and numerous interim superintendents. Without leadership in place, I didn't have the confidence that our city was going to be making our school system a priority until Dr. Adamowski came on board. I am finally seeing a public school system that is now being taken seriously because of things like better um, transparent budgeting processes, improved test scores and testing procedures, the closing of the achievement gap, um, increased offerings at all levels, including the IB program in high school, Project Lead the Way, medical and computer science, um, and the list goes on. And I think in, you know, with all these improvements in turn, um, we see Norwalk um, becoming a better community to live in, to work in, and to own property in, and to, to be a part of. Um, we made some great strides, most notably in the last year. How can we stop now? In our final year, in our final year stretch to implement the strategic plan set forth by Dr. Dr. Adamowski, it would be beyond catastrophic to halt now. It would destroy the morale of the education community and the parents and the children who are in it. My youngest daughter is in the public school system today at Rowayton um, because this is her community and because I see some great progress being made under Dr. Adamowski's direction. She will be my first to attend middle school in Norwalk and is on the path to go to Brian McMahon High School. I am illustrating my story because I'm not the only one like me out there. I understand that the gap can be closed by dipping into the rainy day fund. If this is not a good reason to dip into the rainy day fund, then I don't know what is. Please have the long-term vision in mind when you're making your decision regarding the Board of Ed budgets. We have worked so hard for so long to overcome major challenges to turn the school system around. We understand that these are hard decisions, but please, please don't put all our hard work that we have been, that has been expended by leadership, teachers, administrators, and parents to waste now. Thank you. After Joe speaks, we have Megan Douglas Warren and Mike Byrne. Uh, Joe Jandarko, uh, 163 Chestnut Hill Road. Good evening, members of the Common Council. I stand before you tonight in support of the students and the dedicated teachers and staff that I represent. As the NFT's first vice president, I'm here to advocate for my students and more importantly, my fellow teachers. As a city employee and taxpayer, I'm well aware of the balance that must be struck, excuse me, struck between the growing BOE's budget request and the ability of the taxpayer to fund this request. Over the past few years, change has come to our district, and this change has come with an even greater financial cost. Dr. Amowski's plans have increased the BOE's budget request year after year. I simply ask that you consider the needs of the school system as you take this vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you all for your time tonight. You can see I've got hives because I don't like public speaking, so I apologize. Um, my name is Megan Douglas Warren, and I'm a 40-year resident and proud graduate of the Norwalk Public Schools. I now have two boys in Rowayton Elementary School, my alma mater, and I'm co-chair of our Governance Council. I feel as though I spent my adolescent years defending our schools, and I chose a profession that requires me to do so continually. I've been selling real estate here in Norwalk for 18 years, and I'm sure you all know the most common objection I hear is, but the schools, every day. I can't tell you how many families I have assisted with moves out of the city for this one reason. And it's really saddening. I came into this meeting tonight very last minute, so I'm trusting my counterparts here to share some more detailed value reporting. But you've already seen the evidence is astounding. 
Our success as a city depends on our real estate values, and our real estate values are a direct commentary on the value of our school district and what it offers to incoming residents. The district finally has a superintendent who seems committed to our long-term success. We are on the heels of one of our high schools earning an IB designation, and now an elementary school has been awarded as a school of dis distinction. We are moving in such a positive direction, it is completely short-sighted to put the brakes on now. We have an opportunity to be the best of the best in Fairfield County, something I've been hoping to see now for four decades. Thank you. After Mike Burns, we have Ed Abrams and Lisa Henderson. Mayor Rilling, members of the Common Council, my name is Mike Byrne. I am uh, the proud father of a sixth grade West Rocks Middle School student um, and the president of the PTO Council of Norwalk. I was not able to attend the finance meeting on Thursday evening, but I did send uh, written remarks that were read by one of our representatives, so I will endeavor to be brief this evening. I've been involved in our school since the day my son walked through the front door of Silver Mine Elementary School. Over that time, I have seen five superintendents take the reins. Optimistic when they started, most looked beleaguered after just months on the job, and none had a very long or impactful tenure here in Norwalk. There was no inspirational leadership, motivation was low, most decisions were reactionary, and a pervasive sense of mediocrity hung over our schools. Over the past two and a half years, everything has changed. Under the current leadership, our schools have turned around. There is a palpable pride in our buildings as students achieve like never before. You have been our partners in this journey, working with the Board of Education to address special education concerns, to build new schools, and to give our children the resources they need to succeed. We are entering the final year of our transformative strategic operating plan and the final year of extraordinary funding for special education. Curiously, however, mere feet from the finish line, we feel abandoned by our partners on the council. The budget recommendation put forward by the Finance Committee last week will arrest all progress in our schools. The offered $5.5 million is barely enough to meet increasing contractual obligations. For all intents and purposes, the, the Board of Education will be flat funded in the final and most crucial year of the strategic operating plan. Just as the state tells us our schools are outperforming every other city in the state, you are pulling our funding. Just as we begin to close the achievement gap, you are halting our progress. And just as we begin to meet the moral and legal obligations of our special education commitment, you are withdrawing resources. You have 30 seconds. This is wrong. The Board of Education is offering a fair and reasonable compromise. Keep the tax rate increase to 3.7%, Take $500,000 from the board's insurance surplus and take an additional $1.5 million from the fund balance in order to meet the most critical needs of our strategic operating plan. A further $1.2 million from the fund balance is to be drawn down for the final year of special education funding. Your time is up. All right. This still leaves um, a rather large surplus in our rainy day fund and I urge you to accept this compromise. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ed Abrams. I reside at 20 Morgan Avenue here in Norwalk. I am also the president of the Norwalk High School Marching Band Parent Association. I am not here to talk to you about band tonight, so relax. <laughs> What I am here to talk to you about is the fact that the strategic plan is working. And I will use the students I know, the 180 families I represent, to demonstrate this to you. In the last two and a half years, we have seen a full grade point average increase in students associated with the mu music program 
based on the strategic operating plan. We now have 80% of the students involved in this program receiving honors or better. In the last year, we saw 95% of the graduating class move into four-year college educations. This is all due to the fact that we have a strategic plan, a plan that is funded, a plan that is supported by the people in this room. Now the sad thing for me as a professional is I look around at the council and I know the easy thing to do at this juncture would be to stare at your shoes and say, the plan's baked. We don't know where the money is going to come from. We can't just make it fall from the sky. The reality in this case is that the Board of Education has brought forward to the council a compromise that makes financial sense, that continues to allow us to move down the path of improving education in this community, and that enables us to remain educationally competitive, and provide a cost-effective solution to our, our constituents, to everyone in this city. I urge you not to be those people that stare at your shoes. I urge you to be the people who rethink the decision, consider the compromise that's been brought before you, and accept it as an intelligent way to move forward. Thank you. Lisa, we have Cheryl McGuire and Missy Conrad. Thank you, good evening. I'm Lisa Pisano Henderson, and I reside on Apple Tree Lane in Norwalk. I am a lifelong resident of Norwalk. I attended Norwalk Public Schools. We own a small business in Norwalk, and we own multiple properties in Norwalk. My four children attended Norwalk Public Schools and are now finishing up their college years. We are invested in Norwalk and we continue to support the Norwalk schools and the strategic operating plan, which to me is a comprehensive roadmap to the continued success of the school system and especially its students. It's no different than the new sidewalks that are built or the bike lanes. They all lead to somewhere. The strategic operating plan leads to a brighter future for our students. We want our city to provide our city's children with the best education. They are the future leaders of this city, our state, and our country. Failing to fully fund the Board of Education budget sends a clear message to us that it just doesn't matter enough. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cheryl McGuire, and this is no, Emily. She's a first grader at Brookside. Um, let me start by saying I moved to Norwalk 10 years ago, didn't have Emily, and honestly saw two dog parks and thought, oh my God, I love this town. <laughs> Six years ago, Emily was born, and I started looking at the schools and panicking a little bit. Um, my ex-in-laws pushed for private school for Emily, I fought for her to stay in the Norwalk Public Schools. I'm a big believer in diversity. I'm a big believer that money should not dictate what your education is. And I really hope and pray that Emily spends the next 11 years in the Norwalk Public Schools. However, the way things are going, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't want to move to Trumbull. I don't want to move to somewhere like that. I want to stay in Norwalk. I love Norwalk. I teach at Norwalk Community College. I'm very involved in the community, so I implore you to please look at this face and do the right thing by her. It makes me distraught that it's, I don't know, nine o'clock on a school night, and I have to bring her to a meeting like this to plead our case. It's not right. Kids of the future, take care of the future. Thank you. We have Megan Hopkins and Michelle Robinson. Good evening. My name is uh, Missy Conrad. 
and I live at 37 Stonecrop Road North in Norwalk. Um, we moved here, my husband and I, he was in publishing, and he, uh, double day, we were in a group, Publishers Against the War, walking through New York City, and the construction guys were yelling at us, love it or leave it. And um, so one of the co-workers of my husband said, if you ever come to Connecticut, there's a Quaker meeting there. And we moved to Norwalk because it was diverse. And our son David went through Brian McMahon. He was co-captain of the track. And uh, he's doing very well. He's now in Sandy Hook Promise. Um, he couldn't afford a house in Norwalk, so they moved to Newtown. Our daughter Grace, she was a tricky one. She, uh, the wheels bus started the same year. She was in ninth grade. And she would cut Norwalk High. And it was a perfect example of not enough resources. She fell through the cracks. My husband took her to the private schools. They did not want her. The only one that took her was St. Luke's, 10th, 11th, 12th. She lost a wonderful art at Norwalk High. She had won a prize and she, they said, we should really leave you back. And now she says, I have gaps in my learning. <laughs> you know, she's going to be 50 next year. So anyway, I'm actually here because um, I'm turning 75. And I am tired. And I hope, I have uh, for the Common Council, uh, you know, Mayor Rilling has been a good sport. We keep asking him, we Quakers, since 2016, to join Mayors for Peace. Norwalk is a member of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. This is no, you know, I'm considered sort of uh, gray people, what are they, um, you know, odd, the Quakers, but I don't wear gray, but. Anyway, here's the um, annual meeting, the resolution um, of 2017, to ask the President Trump, oh, I didn't even bring my glasses, um, about nuclear weapons, redirect the spending. If you do not speak up, all of you, artists, 30 seconds. The militarism has taken, Faye wrote, and she didn't say militarism. We need artists and parents in schools, we need the money from the nuclear weapons. I hope you, I have for you information and I've been Martin Luther King's what turned me on to pacifism. So um, please do speak out. The U.S. Congress is giving more to military. Time. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the Common Council. My name is Megan Hopkins. I live at 1 McAllister Avenue. I'm a co-president of the Roten Middle School PTA and a member of the Columbus Magnet School Governance Committee. Every year I've spoken to the BOE and the Common Council, because we do this every year, um, I've told you the story of how my husband and I planned to move out of Norwalk and around the 2005 to 2010 range because we heard about the reputation of the schools. Uh, but then 2008 happened and we couldn't sell our house for what we paid for it and all of a sudden we had a kindergartner. So we started at Columbus Magnet School and we absolutely loved it. We found that there's a lot to love about Norwalk Public Schools and that our children could be <coughs> successful here. So today we have a fourth grader at Columbus and a sixth grader at Roten. We've renovated our house and as my husband says, we're leaving the house feet first. So we're here in Norwalk for the long run. Last week when I addressed the Finance Committee, I asked that you consider funding the BOA bu budget as an investment in the future of Norwalk Public Schools, and as an investment in Norwalk Public Schools would be a benefit to the entire city. Having a strong school system will result in higher property values for all taxpayers and an improved reputation for Norwalk. Today I did a little research on the effect of school, strong school systems and, and property values. A 2016 article from Realtor.com stated that half of the home buying population is willing to pay more than their budget to get the right school district, and that more than half would give up other amenities for strong schools. According to a 2015 Washington Post, Post article, in the, 20, the 35 to 49 age demographic, which I sit very comfortably, the fourth most important criteria for home buying is the school system. 
To bring this argument a little closer to home, I looked at two homes on Realtor.com this morning. One was my friend Megan um, Douglas Warren's listing on Weed Avenue in Norwalk. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath home for with 3,500 square feet for $739,000. 0.4 miles up the road, sitting practically on the Merritt Parkway in New Canaan, there is a house that is just like that house, listed for $979,000. That's a $240,000 difference. So what does New Canaan have over Norwalk? Well, they don't have the beach or an ice rink. They don't have Stu Leonard's, as my nine-year-old told me. They don't have an aquarium or a fancy new mall. They have a high performing school district that is funded and supported each year without parents begging. <laughs> Just today, my former, my, my former neighbor texted me today on this topic because she's been watching from her comfy house in New Canaan um, a, on the Norwalk Parents for Education um, site. And she said, I loved Brookside School. I was excited about Roten and I was excited about McMahon. But we needed more space and we decided we're going to stay in Norwalk or we're going to go to, to another town. And they went to New Canaan because they knew they wouldn't have to fight for education anymore. Education's a priority in New Canaan and Wilton and Westport and everywhere around us. And the investment made results in a strong reputation for their schools. Norwalk can be a school district that people want to get into, but it will take an investment. Tonight I ask that you fund the BOA request, tap into the rainy day fund, and help us to keep Norwalk Public Schools on its current trajectory. Are you Michelle? Yes. Okay, after Michelle, we have Donna Smirviotopoulos and Susan Wallerstein. My name is Michelle Robinson, and I'm here today to speak to you not only as a taxpayer for the city of Norwalk, but as a concerned parent, president of the Kendall School PTA, and parent leader of the Kendall School Governance Council. I would like to say that I'm surprised that I need to be here to ask for support for our children in our schools, as this should be something that is on the foremost list of budgetary items for the city, but yet I'm not. You see the parents that are here this evening, there are so many more that aren't. And this is not because they don't care. It's because we are all hardworking parents that shouldn't have to be here. We shouldn't have to take more time out of our day, time from our children, to come and fight for what is due to them, to Norwalk's future. When we voted in the election, so many spoke of the importance for education for our children. We voted you in, and now it seems you're turning your backs on us, on our children. I shouldn't need to stand here and beg and fight for the monies for our schools. This is a decision that should be crystal clear. Our schools, our children, need that funding to keep closing that achievement gap and making Norwalk a city that parents want to move to, to raise their children and educate them here. But Norwalk has turned their back on our children in schools far too many years. Many of the buildings needing way overdue repairs and renovations to them, black mold on the outsides for not being washed in dec decades, cutting budgets and taking aids from our teachers, pulling from ELL, which is a must for many of our students. Our school doesn't even have a full-time social worker with the budget that you give us. Does this seem right? With all that is going on in this world, a school has to work with a part-time social worker because a social worker who is here two times a week can really get to know 500 students. Where do my taxes go? I'm not sure I can even begin to guess. Would it be for the paving that takes a whole summer to complete for one parking lot? Or the roads that get paved and it's left up to the community to tell you that the work hasn't been finished? My taxes should be going towards my children's education in our schools. So I'm asking you, begging you if need be, we need you to go back and increase this budget for something more than to just cover increases in contracts. It needs to go back to the schools to increase our school day so those children get that extra 30 minutes of education they deserve to bring in more high school teachers so our kids can graduate with enough credits and not sit in numerous study halls. We need that money for that and all the other unimportant things that you would like us to take from them. So I say to you, if there was ever a rainy day to use those funds, it's today because it's a sad day when the city takes from their children instead of from elsewhere. Good evening. Uh, I'm not going to repeat most of what I wrote in the email that I sent to members of the Finance Committee last week. 
Um, I, I would like to have my uh, Captain Quinn moment from Jaws where he says, you all know me, you all know what I do. I'm here to support the budget and to support it in full. Uh, hopefully you all had a chance to read through the looking glass when you were students in school. There's a wonderful scene uh, called the Queen's Race. And Alice and the Red Queen uh, are running as fast as they can, and they're not getting anywhere. And Alice asks the Red Queen, she says, well, in our country, you generally get to somewhere else if you run very fast for a very long time, as we've been doing. And the Queen says, a slow sort of country. Now here you see it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but given the requirements of collective bargaining, funding our schools to get someplace requires twice as much as you think you can give. It's that simple. And the Board of Ed has removed the guesswork by having a strategic operating plan to begin with. I'd like to talk about a few other things while I'm here. Uh, I brought these up last week. Uh, I compared uh, Norwalk to our surrounding towns, which you've heard a lot about. Westport and Greenwich, when you live in those towns, you know who works for you. The people, the public servants in those towns work for you. They work for the taxpayers, they work for the parents. I don't get that feeling in Norwalk all the time. I honestly don't. And it is troubling to me. I want to feel that the public servants see their work. I realize that the pay is terrible, that you are volunteers. And I wish I could pay you. And one reason I wish I could pay you is that then you would know who you work for. You work for all of these people. These people drag themselves from their homes tonight to come here and make a difference. And I hope, for the love of God, that you didn't all make up your minds before you walked in the door today. I know it's happened before. I've come into meetings where I've spoken and people glazed over and I knew what they were going to say and they voted exactly as I predicted. Please prove me wrong. After Susan, we have Nate, Nate Sheldon, Emma Aponte. Thank you. My name is Susan Wallerstein. I'm on one of your other agenda items this evening because appointments and resignations, and thank you for the queue up about volunteers, appointments and resignations that you have to consider tonight are sometimes one of the best occasions for us to acknowledge and thank volunteers who serve in these roles. So I would like to use this opportunity as Chair of the Arts Commission to recognize Becky Christofferson, who is involved in the arts locally with her business tests who often performs everywhere. She's also active in the Norwalk Symphony and the Sono Celebration. She's resigning because after 12 years with the Norwalk Arts Commission, she's going to be assuming more responsibilities with the Norwalk Symphony. Secondly, because we probably will choose to leave after these remarks, I'd like the public and the members of the council to meet Melissa Matuska. How lucky are we to have people who arrive and buy their homes in our community who start attending as volunteers, boards and commission meetings, and are willing to step up with these credentials and serve as a member of the Arts Commission. I'd also like to thank Mr. Hempstead for designating Emerson Straniti, product of Norwalk Public Schools, to serve in his role on the Norwalk Arts Commission. And um, big thanks to Mr. Yurinides, who in addition to all your other responsibilities, again, proud product of Norwalk Public Schools, to add on one more thing besides all your committees to serve on the Arts Commission. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Nate Sheldon, uh, parent of a kindergartner gardener at uh, Marvin Elementary. I'm on the SGC, a uh, member of the PTA. Uh, I made some statements on uh, Thursday. Uh, I'm going to try to take a little different approach tonight. Um, while I respect your decision to add to the coming year's school budget, and I thank you for that, I feel the operating budget we intend to follow as is falls short both in size and how it will be funded. Using the, using the city's rainy day funds avoids additional taxpayer burden and increases the scope of the budgeting process. 
Hearing from other parents and community members at last Thursday's hearing sparked my interest to learn more about the city's financials. What I conclude is that we're in great shape. Our revenues are strong and diversified, more than compensating our expenses, as seen in the growing rainy day fund. Based on all the data that I could find over the last few days, uh, the, our rainy day fund is by far the largest in the state, dwarfing all of our neighboring towns. Our leverage ratios are low, while our liquidity ratios are high, with the majority of debt non-current and uniformly distributed, resulting in low debt service. So there's very little stress on our net position. In a nutshell, we have a lot of fiscal flexibility. These criteria, criteria are important to defend our AAA rating. We're not at risk of losing our credit status. Does having a rate rainy day fund help this argument? Sure, it doesn't hurt, but is it entirely necessary and at what level is it appropriate? If the rainy day fund is growing, it tells me taxpayers are overpaying. So why not give these revenues back to them? And the other argument against using the rainy day fund is, is the reduced salt deduction. I think we might be missing the point here. The lost salt deduction takes money out of the pocket of people who live in high yield, high tax areas like Norwalk. But the bigger issue, however, is what if people start to relocate to lower tax areas and Norwalk starts to lose taxpayers? We need to invest in our city in order to retain these taxpayers and keep our revenues strong. I personally am a New York City commuter who lives in Norwalk. I have this flexibility, so keep me here. So I'm asking all of you, please invest in my daughter's schools, invest in all of our children's schools. This is the single most important thing that will keep my family here. This all has a snowball effect too. If residents start leaving, then businesses will start leaving because either there'll be less people to purchase their products or there'll be an, 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 adequate, uh, an inadequate workforce to employ. So please keep these residents here. If the federal tax code and the state's fiscal woes start to make Norwalk a less attractive place to live, it becomes the city's job to fight on its, on its residents' behalf. We have the ability to do this today. So why leave our city at risk should the state begin reducing Norwalk's grants because of our stellar financial status to fund some irresponsible program elsewhere? I don't think this is about rewarding bad behavior. I think the state may just be running out of options. Let's use our large fund ba balance to pay back Norwalk residents with the necessary programs they've essentially already paid for. We have this opportunity right now, despite these other exogenous factors, to design this city in, this, in ways to retain and even attract new residents. Thank you. Emma, we have, and I'm going to, this is a handwriting that's hard to read, uh, Ms. Jean, Jean and Lisa Thompson. Emma? Okay. So, I, I am Emma Aponte from a fifth grader, and I am, I, I I'm from Nine Caring Drive. So, first of all, we need to find schools to help next generations of kids. And it, it, in my opinion, it's crazy not to not to offend anybody. Um, so, we also need to fund special locations more to help the kids who are having trouble. For example, myself, I have. I would have had more problems without special education, but because of special education, I do find the thing with my FFism. Fast forward helped me, and I have done fine on my maps. I even got recommended for the academically talented program for next year. About my brother Jared, he's done great. He knows how to read, write, and even do math. Well, how he's program, he probably wouldn't know what he knows. Most and most kids have a problem with something, but normal teachers aren't able to do anything about it because they don't have enough help, such as my brother Jimmy. N no one knew for years he had problems. Now, you probably think it's just my family, that, but last year, like, six kids needed help with their math, and my teacher r rounded up a math group after school. My main point is, I think special education and others and, and many other resources need um, need to be funded at school because it helps a child be the best they can be. Also, the people should help. They should help more students. Sorry.
Emma. Anyway, my name is Nizayat Judai. I live at 16 Prowitz Street here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, I spoke last week, so I don't want to be repetitive. Uh, thank you all for being here. Everyone in the city for being here, including all the people in the hall. We wish we could have heard you in the hall. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I'm just really impressed with the turnout and with all the really smart things that people are saying. I'm not as knowledgeable as everyone else, but I know that you know funding the schools is important. My son has study hall every other school day, but on top of that, he has academic assistance over at Norwalk High School because he's sped. So I think the need for more teachers is visible to me, and it is important, as well as funding BOE. But I also know that we don't want to fight for millions here and millions there and then put it on the property taxes. I think there's probably a better way to budget and manage the city so that we don't have to do that. And that's all I'd like to say, and thank you so much. Uh, Lisa Britton Thompson, 24 Highland Avenue. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Common Council, thanks for the opportunity this evening. I'm the proud parent of two uh, recent Brian McMahon graduates. One is at Virginia Tech, courtesy of the Project Lead the Way program at Brian McMahon, found his passion in engineering. My other son was a graduate of the uh, CGS, is majoring in Chinese and economics, and went to that school with 18 AP credits and will be graduating a semester early, saving his mother and father a lot of money. That's courtesy of our school system. Um, Last year, uh, Mr. Mayor, you campaigned on city growth and supporting education. As we all know, they're directly linked because property values, both residential and commercial, fund the majority of our city budget. We had a mere half percent of one percent growth in our grand list, despite all the development. I think it's time the city re-examines its planning and zoning strategies and reduces the land use lawsuits, and at a minimum has a strategic plan that is linked to our Board of Education. Otherwise, we're all going to be back here again next year. The school district who worked very hard over the years and with Dr. Adamowski's leadership is delivering the results. As mayor and the, and the leader of this city, shouldn't you be considering touting our successes nationally to corporations and foundations rather than comparing ourselves to neighboring towns to bring additional revenues to this city? That's what mayors of other successful cities have done. And with all due respect, that's what I would have done. Thank you very much. The next three speakers are Ben Sara, Diane Loricella, and Drew Patrick. Hi, good evening. My name is Ben Sara, and I'm the father of two children at Jefferson School in Norwalk. I'm not going to repeat what's been said here tonight, but the one thing that strikes me about things like this budget sheet that make me nauseous to look at, is everyone loves schools, everyone loves children, everyone talks about the future. No one thinks that schools shouldn't be funded. So why is this an issue? Why are we here? Because I assume more than half of the people who live in Norwalk don't have children or don't have children in the school. So you have this trade-off. I don't want my tax dollars to go up and I don't want my tax dollars to go to the school because I don't need the school. But that is a false equivalency because we can't pick and choose the things that we want to pay our taxes to. I don't use X, so I don't want to pay for it. That's not the way it works. I think we all agree that the schools are doing improvement over what they were. And I would lastly like to say that history is made by people that show up. And who I don't see here tonight are the majority of the families and the children that go to my son's school where their English is a second language, they're single parents, everyone works, everyone works two jobs, they can't be here. So if I'm not being too presumptuous, I would like to speak on their behalf, which is if they understood these issues and they understood what's at stake, I guarantee you they'd be here, but the reality is they can't. And lastly, I think we all watch the news and we can't go a minute without seeing how horrible things are happening in the world and we can't control a lot of it. And Mayor Rilling can't control nuclear weapons despite what has been said tonight. 
I think the important thing is what can we control, which is that we can do better. We can strive and set our goals really high, and I think we can meet them. And I, I thank you for your, your ongoing consideration, and I truly hope that you focus on this issue so that, again, we do not have to do this every single year. Thank you. Sorry. Good evening. For the record, my name is Diane Loricella, 21 Blue Mountain Ridge Road. I'm here tonight. Uh, I wasn't going to come out. In fact, quite frankly, I now kind of don't regret losing the election for city council at large. But the thing is, I actually would love to be up there with you so we could make these choices together. And I'm here to try to assist you. There are many hard choices that you have to make. So I know that doing your due diligence after tonight will be so important. And it's not an easy job. So I wish you well. We want to congratulate all of us, the parents, the staff, the council, and the taxpayers on a job well done as we're seeking achievements in the school system. But I want to say tonight that I don't support that we fully fund, which is the catchword, the Board of Ed budget, but we instead still look for strategic cuts in the entire city budget Revenues ad added and savings, they are there. It is not that hard to find them if you look. Please still find more ways for that. And one thing is a shout out, one way to add more revenues in the future so these parents and others won't have to come and beg every year is come out, all of you, to the plan of conservation and development meetings. There are nine of them. Make your voices heard. I call it monetizing the plan of conservation and development. Decide where certain kinds of land use goes because it gives us more tax revenue so that you don't have to keep coming out and begging. Show up. That's what we have to do. Mention the school system in one of nine of these. If not, at least send in your plans, because the mayor and Steve Kleppen and others would like to hear from you. Let's make them hear from us after tonight. I want to say that we need a strategic operating plan for land use for zoning enforcement, for making sure we have enough clean water to drink. That's what we're going to talk about in the plan of conservation and development. Another thing you have to look at, though, people, is beyond the Board of Ed budget, is things like reappointments. I want to suggest that we don't reappoint the same people to the Board of Assessment Appeals. We've had lots of appeals. We've lost millions of dollars. The time has come for some new blood. Lastly, I'm here tonight because I want this council to go back to the drawing board and I'm opposed to the grant coordinator and communications manager as written. I know there needs to be good communications and messaging. We have the staff already, but what we do need, again, people, please help me with this. We need a full-time grant writer to bring in millions more dollars so that we don't need to come up here and beg. And, I, and I'll and i final, finally, the question is, did anyone look at other cities and how they handle, especially Bridgeport and Stanford, their special grant writers that are full-time and very professional? If not, why not? Thank you. After Drew Patrick, we have Mary Jordan, Mark Bonacetta, and Nora King. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Drew Patrick, a Cricklewood Lane and here in Norwalk. Um, I have two daughters at Columbus Magnet and listening to my neighbors tonight, I realize I'm a relative newcomer uh, as an 18 year resident here uh, in Norwalk. Um, I live in two school communities. I uh, get up in the morning in Norwalk and my kids go to Norwalk Public Schools and then I get in my car and I drive to my job where I'm a school district administrator. Uh, in Scarsdale Public Schools in Westchester County, New York. And a curious thing happens to me there. Um, every day I'm involved in conversations with parents and teachers and staff 
and some students, high school students in particular. And um, every once in a while the conversation turns to, so where do you live, what's your life like? And I talk about um, my life here in Norwalk. And people ask, so are you gonna send your kids to Scarsdale? That's a benefit of working there. You can send your, your kids there. And I very easily say, no. And they ask, why not? And the list is long, but some of the reasons lately that I share is Columbus Magnet School. It's a hot school, choice, school choice that parents have uh, in Norwalk. The governance structure, the IB program, the early college high school program. We've heard about Project Lead the Way a couple times tonight. More recently, my fifth grade daughter has started <clears throat> in the Teach to One math program. None of these exist where I go to work. Scarsdale, pretty well-known school district in the country, and I get interesting looks, I get funny looks. These opportunities, these options, these pieces of this strategic operating plan that have made these things happen aren't available in that community, a very affluent community. Um, it's really exciting to be able to say that. And it seems to me as the years have gone on in the last several years, as this strategic operating plan has moved forward, that I've been able to say more and more. Uh, more and more reasons that I wanna stay here. More and more reasons I want my children to go through the schools. More and more reasons um, to, be, to be proud. Um, I understand that you've heard a lot about the support in this room for the strategic operating plan. It's sensible, it's rigorous, it's, it's forward-looking, it's, it's working, it's working. Please fund it. Good evening to the mayor, common council members, distinguished city officials, Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak uh, and for your continued work on behalf of our wonderful city. I am Mary Jordan, the Norwalk Federation of Teachers President. I wish to start off by restating and supporting what Mr. Kimmel stated in a recent piece in the Norwalk Hour. And I quote, we are a diverse community with common interests and a common future, and that future depends on the quality of the schools. And I, I believe that. Our schools have made good progress with the generous funding the city approved last year, that you approved last year. Priority areas identified for attention in the coming year include, as you know, high school staffing, science instruction, K-12, special education, English language learners, and many more very important initiatives. Of course, there have been disagreements about how to achieve the desired results, but nonetheless, I am here tonight in hopes, speaking, that on, on behalf of the members of the Norwalk Federation of Teachers and their colleagues, that they will be supported to do the work that they are committed to doing every day, what they have devoted their careers to doing, guiding all of our children to high school graduation, having fulfilled their academic potential, with the proper attention to their social and emotional development, despite any individual student challenges. We are grateful for your continued support for our schools. Our children and our community will be stronger as a result. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mark Bonacera. I'm a Norwalk resident, Seven Button Wall Trail, father of two children at Columbus Magnet School and West Rocks Middle School, and a former New Norwalk School administrator and a current elementary school principal in Stamford. I'm here to request that the BOE's proposed budget be fully funded in order to continue to move our school system and city forward. Your support of this budget is needed to meet the important goals of the strategic operating plan, including a longer school day to bring us in line with other municipalities, an elimination of non-effectual high school study halls, and support for ESL students. Please do not put 
our school system in the position of having to make damaging cuts at this time, such as to kindergarten aides and middle school sports. It's time to tap into a portion of the rainy day fund and show support for our young people. Thank you very much for your service and your consideration. After Nora King, we have Brian Meek, Barbara Meyer Mitchell, and Bruce Kimmel. Good evening. I am Nora King. I live at 17 Covewood Drive in Norwalk, Connecticut. I understand that many of you have already decided not to fully fund the Board of Ed. That's a shame. The Board of Ed and the city need to start getting along. This is one team, Team Norwalk. The city's job is to ensure that there is enough revenue to fund the strategic initiatives of the Board of Ed. Mayor Rilling unfortunately inherited a mess when he took office. He followed Dick Moshe who didn't do one thing for the Board of Ed. Most of Harry's administration has been trying to steer the ship in a new direction, not an easy task. The Board of Ed has been fairly funded the past few years, but unfortunately, they have had to fight for everything. This should not be the way. The city in the past has been asking for accountability for the Board of Ed. The Board of Ed is showing accountability for their funds. They're closing the achievement gap no, major, major accomplishment. We have a school of distinction. Wow. They are working on security, cleaning up past pension obligations, and they are a leader in rolling out the Common Core in the nation. You ask for accomplishments, and wow, they have done it. Kudos. I am proud of our Board of Ed. I adore Dr. Adamowski. We finally have a superintendent who has a backbone and is cleaning house and putting us on the right path. A long time coming. We still have a long way to go. We need major help in our school athletic programs. We have inferior ballparks for our children. All of these issues the Common Council and the Board of Ed are going to need to work together on. A few realities that perhaps no one else has the nerve to say, but I'm going to put myself out there. These are issues you are well aware of, and they need to be fixed so that in the future we are not sitting here in this room fighting to educate our children. First, it is your job to ensure our valuations on commercial property are assessed correctly. I have provided many spreadsheets and examples where the city has undervalued commercial property and left it untaxed at the expense of residential property owners. This has to be fixed. It is your job to do this. If this was done correctly, our grand list would be growing at a faster rate than 0.5% and we could fund more Board of Ed initiatives. Or how about more sidewalks? Or better yet, ballparks? Or how about senior citizen tax relief? 30 seconds. Second, development. I'm pro-development. We give a developer on Waypoint when he goes and changes our plans midstream $4 million for infrastructure and for tax payments. We don't want to fund the Board of Ed, but we want to give the developers money. And how about the last one, zoning enforcement? How about, as an appraiser, I see it all. I could fill a coffee book with all the weird, sad stuff I see. I go into a house that the landlords are using as boarding houses. They, they will take a five-room apartment and rent out four of those rooms to individual families with children, all sharing a common kitchen. Guess who's in all those rooms? Children that are taxing our Board of Ed system. If we were enforcing zoning, we wouldn't have overcrowding in our schools. It's the Board of jo Ed's job to educate those students, and if you're allowing these zoning violations to occur in these illegal structures, you shouldn't penalize the Board of Ed to have to educate those families. Do the right thing this year. Use the rainy day fund. Stop blaming the Board of Ed and then fix these problems I mentioned so that we're not having the same discussion this year, next year. I'm tired every year of coming back. Here. is running, Mr. Mayor. Well, thanks. Good evening, members of the Common Council, President Heidi, Mayor Rilling, uh, and the handout for you. Ralph's going to put a slide up for me. I'm going to talk to you in a few seconds. Um, what you have in front of you is an hour article from late September of 2017. 
In it, it says, uh, uh, this is about the budget fiasco with the state. Malloy's revised resource allocation plan reduces statutory grant funding to Norwalk by 5.7 million. And according to our finance director, oh, there's no cause for alarm. Uh, this reduction will not impact the city's AAA bond rating. So let me get this straight. We could give $5.7 million to Dan Malloy, but we don't give a cent to our schools? Come on, really? $5.7 million to plug the state's holes in their finances and zero dollars for the schools. Let that sink in. So I have numbers drawn up here from our annual reports going back 18 years, looking at the, these magical numbers that we always can't seem to get our hands around. And you know what? We have maintained AAA bond rating each and every year over the last 18 years, including an eight and a half million dollar drawdown over three years when we had half as much money in it, okay? And again, in 2006 to 2008, another $6 million drawdown when we had half the money we have sitting in the rainy day fund right now. You know, so, so this whole AAA excuse at risk, it, it's a smoke screen. Don't buy it, don't fall for it. We're at over 15% of our reserves right now. Now I know Mr. Barron comes up with this 13.7 number. Well, of course he can come up with that. He's adding in $40 million of teacher retirement payments that never hit our checking account. It, it's, a, it's a pro forma number, it, it's required by GASB, but that money never comes in or goes out of the city. Okay, so that's a smoke screen. I'm gonna talk in real cash and real numbers here. Okay, we're at 15% of our operating expenses in our reserves. You gotta use this money, you gotta invest it back in the schools, and don't stop at the schools, do the sidewalks, do senior tax relief, have it all. This city can be great, use our resources. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Julie Corbett, 18 Roosevelt Street. Uh, for some of you uh, may not know me, I am one of the newest members of the Board of Education this year. This evening I'm not speaking to you just as a member of the Board of Education, but from a number of perspectives. First of all, as the mother of a 17-month-old toddler, the decision the adults make today, tonight, in this room, profoundly impact my child's future. As a taxpayer and a resident of Norwalk for the last three years, of course I don't want to see my taxes increase without a clear plan for effectively and efficiently using them across the entire city. When my husband and I were house hunting three years ago, house after house clearly had kids that were either about to go to elementary school or about to go to middle school. I don't know where all of those families were going, but they clearly weren't staying in Norwalk. Our schools and our city services, including all city services, must be strong to attract families to come here and to stay here. For families that have the means, the option is often to stay in Norwalk and pay for private school or to move to another surrounding town and pay a higher mortgage and higher taxes. As the president of a national education consulting company and as a leader in the school and district improvement world across the country, I firmly believe that Norwalk Public Schools are on the right path. Needs were assessed, a direction was determined, goals were set, and the strategies to meet those needs are being implemented. Now the work is being monitored and mid-course corrections are being made. This is the exact continuous improvement cycle that I advocate for professionally and hope to see across the country and very rarely do. In the school and district improvement world, it often takes three years to see real improvements in student performance and five years to really turn around the trajectory of a school and a district. Five years of concerted effort and concentrated resources, including people, time, money, and program, are necessary to sustain and continue improvements over time. Not fully funding the BOE request, or at a minimum, not fully funding the proposal presented this evening excuse me, this evening, puts Norwalk in a precarious position. Student performance could set, stagnate, and may even decline. I've seen schools and districts across the country improve temporarily and then decline when systems and structures are not in place, put in place to sustain those efforts. 
In, addi in addition, attracting top talent to the central office is of utmost importance. Strong leadership is one of the most important components for improving schools and districts. The decisions you make tonight impact not only the students sitting in classrooms tomorrow, but the few future talent that we must attract to keep the district moving on this strong and positive trajectory. The gains seen in the last few years have been monumental, and yet seconds. there is still a great deal of work to be done. Norwalk schools have been underfunded for decades, and we are finally getting to a place where operations are becoming more efficient and student achievement is improving. Norwalk schools are part of the city, and the quality of the schools impacts the desirability to attract and to retain residents. Please, I implore you to reconsider um, funding the proposal that Chairman Barbas and Dr. Adamowski have presented to you tonight. Thank you. Following uh, Ms. Mitchell, Meyer Mitchell, is Bruce Kimmel and Jackson Dino. There's hardly anything left to say. I want to start by saying, please remember Emma when you're considering the special ed turnaround fund. She's what it's all about. Everyone here wants our schools to be excellent, you included. And the issue is, how do we afford that? Budgeting always requires compromises, particularly in a vibrant, diverse, and growing city like ours with so many stakeholders. The Board of Education has come before you tonight with a compromise that we feel could work for all of us. I have stood here several times over the seven years that my children have been in the Norwalk Public Schools to share that Norwalk is my American dream. Norwalk is a great place to live. We have the beach, we have Cranberry Park, easy access to transportation to the city and shopping, and the kindest community you could ever hope for. Our weakest link historically in terms of attracting and retaining residents is our school system. It has been our Achilles heel, but that is changing. We have steadily improved our scores on the State Accountability Index, scoring 76.9% and landing us at the top of our district resource group, reference group. Norwalk's growth exceeds that of the state overall and represents the highest gain of any of the state's 21 cities. We should be proud of that. Neighboring Wilton is only 3.6% ahead of us, and they are spending 20,000 per student, as opposed to our 17, practically 17. We were able to close the achievement gap by a third last year, by finally imp implementing tier two and three inter interventions. Rowayton School was named a school of distinction, a notable achievement given 45% of their students are high needs. Several other schools in the district are approaching category one, that's huge. The Board of Education feels confident that by adding instructional time at our most vulnerable elementary schools and investing in supports for English language learners, we can continue to close the achievement gap and give all of our students a bright future. These improvements achieved in such a short time have convinced me that my dream of excellent schools on a lean budget can be a reality for Norwalk. We have a finite period of time to take advantage of Dr. Adamowski's experience and leadership given that he will only be in Nor Norwalk for five years. While I, do every, while, while I promise to do everything in my power to ensure that our next superintendent is as effective, this is the moment to take advantage of his prodigious talents. If we defer implementing the strategic operating plan, we have less time to work with him to ensure that it is successful. I can tell you that the cuts that would be needed to be made in order to achieve the strategic operating plan operating plan with the money you have proposed would be painful. As we emerge from the recession, we have already been cut to the bone, as has the city, and we are only just now rebuilding. I, impl I'm so. I implore you to increase your proposed funding to the Board of Education's operating budget by $1.5 million this year. I know you have many factors to balance as you make your decisions, and I know a compromise is necessary. I respectfully ask that you consider this compromise so that we can continue the excellent progress that we've made together. Norwalk is my American dream, and I represent a large group of parent taxpayers in this city who feel the same way. Thank you. Good evening. Bruce Kimmel, 9 Toilsom Avenue, and a member of the Board of Education. Until the last couple of years, 
I believe it's fair to say the city of Norwalk was in denial when it comes to education. We failed to appreciate the consequences of the unfair and punitive education cost sharing formula. We downplayed the devastating Cambridge report in 2008. We virtually ignored a series of correct reports. Fortunately, two years ago, the board took major steps forward in the long overdue effort to reform our schools. With help from the city, we adopted a three-year turnaround plan for special education, which for years had been a major financial drain on the city, but more importantly, de deprived hundreds of our special needs students the services they needed and deserved. We are already seeing the fruits of that initiative as we move into its third year. The board also adopted a three-year strategic operating plan. We are already seeing the positive results of the plan as Norwalk can now boast as being the number one urban district in the state, not to mention being number one in our DRG reference group. Last year, the city funded year one of the strategic plan, and the results have been inspiring. Now is the time to make a difficult decision and continue the funding. We are midstream, catching up quickly, beginning to provide our students the long overdue programs their predecessors sadly did not have. Slowing down the implementation of these much needed reforms is the equivalent of denying an entire cohort of students the education they need to compete in our ever more complex and competitive world. There's been much talk lately of the minimum budget requirement and the city's undesignated fund balance. But let's look at the problem this way. The programs in the strategic plan have to be implemented and will be implemented. Federal and state law won't allow districts to do otherwise. In the long run, it does not matter whether we draw down the fund balance now or later, nor does it truly matter what next year's MBR is, as long as the board and the city agree on the level of future requests. The world of education has, drastically, has changed drastically, drastically since the implementation of No Child Left Behind in 2003 and updated in 2015 with Every Student Succeed Act. 30 seconds. The stakes are now higher. Mediocrity is no longer an option. The achievement gap must be closed, and the consequences of shortchanging schools can be severe. Until 2008, many officials in Norwalk believed our school system was pretty good. And then the Cambridge and Correct reports painted an embarrassing picture. Yet it still took another few years to realize what had happened. Now is not the time to turn back the clock. Just as one last point, I've had the good fortune, I had the good fortune of serving on the city's audit committee for eight years. Uh, two years ago, I remember clearly listening to some of the folks from McGlad McGladry speaking about our reserve accounts. And they talked about having too much funds in our reserve accounts and used the word, they said it was taxpayers' money and there was some ethical issues involved. And they recommended us, recommended that we withdraw, we make sure that those accounts are drawn down properly. I'm not talking about the fund balance, but it's an ethical issue. If it's an ethical issue from the city's perspective to the Board of Ed, it's an ethical issue from the Board of Ed's perspective to the city, but most important of all, it's an ethical issue for people in our city, both taxpayers, parents who are the same. They are the same people. The folks here, I guess, I would guess are all taxpayers. And all taxpayers have an interest in what goes on in our schools. We can't deny that. So the difference between 12.7 and 11.7 in a fund balance, or 10.7, compared to a quality education for hundreds and hundreds of children, to me, that's a no-brainer. Thank you. What I think as a courtesy to the folks here, if when you do get to your get into the meeting, if you can move the cap resolution up to the front so people don't have to sit through the other business. I think that would be a good idea. Thank you. Hello, fellow citizens and elected officials. My name is Jackson Dino. I am 15 years old and I am a student at Brian McMahon High School. I am also the vice president of the class of 2020 at my school. 
And tonight, I don't have any statement prepared to bring you. In fact, this morning when I woke up, I didn't even have any idea I would be making a speech tonight. <laughs> so everything I'm about to say comes directly from my heart. And I hope that I can speak on behalf of my fellow students, since there's barely been any students who have spoken today. It's mostly been adults. When, when us students look around the room, um, we usually see a bunch of adults and we think, oh, they're the ones making the decision. But I think it's nice for uh, students to have some input as well, especially when the matter directly involves us, as, as in uh, the school budget. And I, like everyone else before me tonight, believe that it is crucial and critical that we fund our schools to their full potential. Now, I've heard people mention um, the issue of study halls, and I can speak from experience. Tomorrow morning, I have a study hall for an hour and a half. Before that, there was a scheduling conflict in which I actually had a study hall for two consecutive periods in a row, which meant that I would have had study halls for three hours out of my six-hour school day. Fortunately, that conflict was quickly resolved once I went to the guidance office, but the fact that the potential to have that conflict even exists is outrageous. And I, and I hope that the Common Council and Mayor Rillings will take steps to further fund our schools and prevent scenarios like that from happening in the future because I, because I, I really, really, want to have the best education I can possibly get. And Brian McMahon High School, once a senator, always a senator, by the way. <laughs> Brian McMahon High School is a pretty good school. Um, like any school, it, it has some faults, but it's still a very good school, but it can get better, as can every other school in this district. So once again, I'd like to reiterate, please fund our schools. Thank you. The back of this sheet has all these names on the back. They were, um, Ms. King, my understanding is those are just people that wanted to sign up that they were here in favor of changing the budget? Well, yeah, there are 44 names on the back. We are more than happy to let everyone come up and speak, which is about an hour, 132 minutes. Um, we will have to, I believe, Mr. Hempstead, you're the expert here. We would probably, if we're going to go past midnight, have to have a vote on that. That's correct. So we would have to have a vote on that. So there, the 44 names on the back, are there people within this group that are still um, interested in speaking? They were all people that were not able to get in the room, so they were just signing their name that they support the Board of Ed's vote. Okay, well, um, all right, why don't we do this? We're going to read off the 44 names. And everybody who wishes to speak, when your name is called, let us know, okay? This way we're not going to shut anybody out. City clerk, you want to read the names? <laughs> and if there's anybody out in the hallway, call them in. Handwriting looks pretty good on this list. Rob Shute, Jeff Delio, Emma Gilbo, Mushtag. Kappa Dwala, Scott Peterson, Raj Pandey, Blair Anderson, Constantino Sirikides, Mora Morash, Michael Sa Sebastian, Maria Montoya, Edison Montoya, Scott, <coughs> it looks like Harriman, Olga Zargos Traub, Jennifer Valencia, Albania Vilaba, Lynn Camillo, Sam Valencia, Ava Maiman, Mary Beth Murray, Azra Asadudin, Sonia Latin, Alfonso Latin, please excuse me if I'm mispronouncing your name, Jamie Booth, Angelina Murphy, Amy Sealer, Jonathan Krikov, Lindsay Krikov, Jessica Mauser, Matthew Luster, Reginald 
I'm sorry, I can't read the last name. Linda Piacenza, Lori Keegan, Jessenia Roxbury, April Gibo, Eddie Vera, Ward Rambushi, Rambushi, Paige Fauna, Erica Marusco, Marasco. Oh, sorry, it looks, it's three names. Um, last name is, looks like Cotton. There's three, four Cottons, uh, including Jamie, Corwina, and uh, another name I can't read. And Benjamin Wesley. Okay. Why, why don't we do this? We just got another sheet. Uh, is there anybody right here right now that wishes to address the board uh, the uh, common council why don't you come down and anybody else yeah, these kids got to go to bed <laughs> and if somebody could check in the hallway to see if there's anybody else out there that wishes to address the board or the council Yeah, that, yeah. Okay, so there's nobody out there and nobody in here other than the people that have come to the podium that wish to offer comments. One more. Line up. And if you could state your name and your address and um, you're on. Thank you. My name is Olga Zargos Traub. Hold the mic down closer. My name is Olga Zargos Traub, and I reside at 38 Devil's Garden Road. <clears throat> My husband and I are tax, nor taxpayers, have resided in Norwalk since 2004, and are the parents of three public school aged children, two of whom are with me today. <clears throat> uh, our oldest attends Rowan Middle School, and our two youngest attend Columbus Magnet School. Um, we. I bring my children here this evening, despite it's way past their bedtime, um, so they could listen and observe um, how um, the actions of the adults in their community, um, how they regard their education, how you as the adults in their community um, have the power to directly impact their education and future. As I uh, was waiting patiently to come up here, my son asked me, Mommy, can I come to more meetings uh, in the future? And although I am proud of him saying that, it kind of breaks my heart because I really hope that he does not have to beg and plead for his children's education when he's an adult. Putting that aside, we plead with you today to fully fund the compromised Board of Education budget as requested by Dr. Adamowski. As we all here to, uh, have heard um, over and over, this will allow our superintendent and the Board of Education to fully implement the strategic operating plan for 2018 and 2019, which is vital to the ongoing and palpable progress of Norwalk Public Schools. We thank you for your vote last week um, of approving 5.5 million, however, that was not enough and falls short of fully funding the request. Your vote will unfortunately result in significant cuts to the Board of Education budget that will jeopardize the progress our school district has made in three short years. Norwalk can no longer afford to go two steps, <clears throat> can no longer afford to go two steps forward and five steps, steps back. We've moved beyond that. <clears throat> As we all know, the strength and success of our public schools has a direct correlation to the taxes, the livability, the robustness of Norwalk, and to Norwalk's ability to retain families and attract contributing members of society who want to put down roots in Norwalk and support the continued boom that Norwalk is undergoing. As we are sensitive to the taxpayers' interest of capping the mill rate at 3.7% increase during this reevaluation year, we ask you to draw the additional funds from Norwalk's rainy day fund. Using the additional needed funds from the Rainy Day Fund will not jeopardize Norwalk's AAA bond credit rating and will be used for the exact purpose of having a Rainy Day Fund, money to be used in desperate times. We are in desperate times because we can no longer afford to go backwards. 
but we need to keep the momentum going and the success of public schools going. As such, my children and I and husband ask you to fully fund the Board of Education's budget as requested by Dr. Adamowski by dipping into Norwalk's rainy day fund in order to continue the progress of Norwalk's public schools to advance the interests of all taxpayers and to advance our children's future. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Common Council. My name is Heather McHugh. I live at 82 Newtown Avenue. Um, as with the young man from Brian McMahon, when I woke up this morning, I figured I would be fighting for budgetary concerns for the U.S. Department of State, which is who I work for. Um, but today I find myself in a position of wanting to take responsibility to vocalize what I believe is a need for all parents. I have two children who are twins at Cranberry Elementary who both got a very difficult start in life. I had them 12 weeks early. My son was in the hospital for two years, trached, vented, had a lot of medical complications. And when I was in the Birth to Three program, we said, should we stay in Norwalk? Or should we move to another town that has a better educational system? I moved here in 2005. I was having this conversation in 2011. And the person that was um, our therapist at the time said, no, give Norwalk a shot. Norwalk is a great community. You're going to love this community. You're going to love these teachers. They care about students. And I found that to be absolutely true when my two twins entered at three years old at Cranberry. And they spent a whole lot of time in pre-K. They were held back. They had developmental delays. They worked with every single therapist and social worker in that school. They have autism spectrum disorder. They've had um, you know, physical disabilities that they've overcome. You, you would look at them now and say that nothing happened to them. And I want to tell you that the reason that they are functioning as typical children is because of the love and support and care and skill that they received in the Norwalk school system. And when people I work with ask me, what are you going to do when your kids get to middle school? Are you going to send them to All Saints? Are you going to send them to Rogers? Where do you think your kids are going to go? I say, no. I'm going to keep them in the public school system. Why? Because I value diversity. I want them to have the experience that resonates with the rest of the world. Norwalk represents what, what most communities in America are looking to achieve, where people can work together in a community to seek a common goal to move those generations forward to do great things. And I believe with this little bit of money, and when you look at it in the whole scheme of things, and I work for the federal government, so I know that bureaucracy is like walking a dinosaur. <laughs> I get $10,000 a year for the passport agency to buy services that I need to support 70 employees. So when I, when I tell you about creative budgeting, I understand what you're facing. But there is no better investment than in these teachers and paras and social workers. Every single person in that school cares. They give more than they need to. They need dry erase markers. They go out to Staples and buy it out of their pocket. Why? Because they don't have the money to get what they need for basic supplies. Your parents are willing to pay for it. So I'm asking you, if I can buy dry erase markers and tissues and wipes and Purell for these teachers, you can give us a little more money to make the quality of life for these students better as they go forward in life. And I really appreciate your time, and I hope that you will give this some more consideration. Thank you. Kind of like the Senator Brian McMahon kid that was here earlier, I wasn't exactly planning on speaking today and I wasn't really aware entirely of what the issue was today until I attended and came to hear for myself. And I can't speak to the monetary needs of our school because a lot of students... For the record, could we have your name? Alexis Morelli. Thank you. Um, because we were left in the dark a lot in regards to monetary needs, but I can speak from inside the school as a 12-year Norwalk Public School student. 
Going on senior year, I got to choose my courses. I got to take the electives I've been looking forward to. And one of those was forensics. Looking into that class, I took that class because the teacher who was intended to teach was one who studied forensics, took special courses to teach forensics, and was somebody who loved forensics. I walked in my first day to see somebody who was not that teacher. The reason I didn't have that teacher was because they didn't want to pay her the extra money to teach an extra course. So I, as a student, am now missing out on a forensics course that I'm looking forward to taking into college now. I don't get the special teaching, the special, special education, because we didn't want to pay a teacher to teach an extra course. Same situation happened in my art class, where 40 students were turned away because they didn't want to pay a teacher to teach another course. And from what I'm understanding now, is we have the money, we have the resources to now pay for this education that we're all looking for. We have the resources to pay our teachers to get updated textbooks or to get the technology we need. And you're not providing it to us, and I don't see why not. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> So I guess that's the list now, and we appreciate everybody coming out. Um, we're probably going to take a five-minute recess in a few moments, uh, but I do want to tell everybody that we've heard what you had to say, and know that this year, like in the past, we are committed to working with the Board of Education to do everything we can to give the funding that is necessary to continue the strategic plan. And we support the street, uh, strategic plan, and we also know that, Nor and by the way, this is a uh, comment from the council, uh, Norwalk needs and deserves a top tier school system. Uh, last year, the council and I acknowledged that the time has come to sacrifice and invest in our Board of Education. We approved a year-over-year -year increase of almost $8 million, a 4.5% increase to the Board of Education. We're also committed to spend over $130 million over the next five years to improve the infrastructure, to build two new schools, and to improve all the other schools uh, in the school system. We intend to continue that commitment this year. We must do so in the context, obviously, of uncertain state funding, a looming state deficit, a reval on the horizon, and new federal tax law, which limits deductions for state and local taxes. These challenges are of real and great concern to our citizens and elected officials. And it's not easy putting together a budget and having to consider not only making sure that we fund our Board of Education, but also making sure that we don't overtax the people perhaps living on a fixed income who um, are struggling as well. We know that we need to keep our eye on the goal, but also in the context of current economic climate. Um, I want to acknowledge there's been a lot of talk about the city's fund balance, or the rainy day fund, we call it, and a request for the city to dig deeper into those reserves to fund the BOE budget. I have heard these requests, and we will recommend that the city will withdraw at least a $1.2 million from that fund for the purpose of paying for the final year of the special education fund. I am also in support of the Finance Committee's recommendation for a 3.7% mill rate increase. This will is quadruple the average increase over the past several years. What is before the Council today is a recommitment to a historic investment in our school system. Uh, I know we've heard a lot of numbers, but the city side of the budget after uh, contractual mandates includes a 0.9% increase, less than 1% funding for new initiatives, including hiring additional staff to enable better zoning compliance and replacement of outdated and expired policing equipment. The recommended increase on the city side is so low because I have instructed my staff that the city side needs to wait. We need to take the next four to five years to focus on improving our schools. We are recommending the highest increase of any surrounding town or major city uh, in the state. It's a testament to our commitment to the value of our school district. The district's total request for $11.1 .1 million, that is 9.9 in operating and 1.2 for the special ed, we have identified the following to bring us as close as possible to that number. $1.2 million extra from the uh, rainy day fund, 5.5 million from taxpayers, 1.1 million from the BOE insurance reserves. Now, the city had a $6 million insurance reserve, but because we are no longer um, uh, self-insured, 
uh, we have drawn down that six million dollar reserve to zero and we would ask that the Board of Education consider doing the same thing. Also, next year, from the 18-19 fiscal year, uh, the Board of Education is scheduled to receive an extra $382,000 in educational cost sharing. So that would bring us to about $8.2 million, 74% 74, 74 of the BRE request, and a 4.5% year-over-year increase, the same increase as last year. Now, having said that, Contract or these kinds of discussions continue. We know that Dr. Adamowski and his staff and me and my staff will continue to meet to determine how we can get closer to make sure that we do everything we can. In fact, in the past four years, the four budgets that this council or most of this council has been responsible for, we have given um, increases totaling almost $22 million or over $5 million a year. So I think we've shown a commitment to try to work with the Board of Education uh, as much as we possibly can while still trying to hold down uh, the, the uh, increase in cost to our taxpayers. As you may know, the city has no authority over uh, to determine how the uh, Board of Education funds are spent. Our only role is determining the dollars allocated to the Board of Education. We've heard from many of you tonight about the importance of different programs and initiatives and they, how they should not be cut. I expect tonight for this 4.5% year over increase to be adopted, it will then be up to the BOE to determine whether to apply these funds toward new initiatives or sustaining programs, or we should continue the discussions uh, because the Board of Estimate and Taxation does have the authority at some point, if we de uh, determine it appropriate, to come back to the council and ask for an increase in the cap that's set tonight. So uh, having said that, uh, I think that we probably, uh, Mr. Kites? Call for a 10 minute recess. I, all in favor, uh, Mr. Kites has called for a 10 minute recess. All in favor? Uh, thank you, we'll be back in 10 minutes. We understand our Recess was a little bit more than 10 minutes, but we had some robust and healthy discussions. Um, next item on the agenda is um, resignations and appointments. Uh, as you know, we had a resignation of Becky Christofferson from the Arts Commission. Next item is an appointment of Melissa Matuska for the Arts Commission. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Igneri. Any comment or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. I know she was here earlier. I don't think she's here now. Is she? No. No, but congratulations. Next item on the agenda is reappointments. Uh, we can probably do them all together because it's assessment uh, appeals board. Um, we have Kathleen Clement, Assessment Appeals Board, Joe Dupree, Assessment Appeals Board, Jane Reedy, Assessment Appeals Board, Mary Ellen Burrell, Assessment Appeals Board Alternate, Donald Overton, Assessment Appeals Board Alternate, and Harriet Petridis, Assessment Appeals Board Alternate. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. So moved. Moved by Mr. Igneri. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions, motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mayor's remarks right now. Um, we, as you know, this Saturday, March 3rd at 11 a.m., there will be a gun control march or a, against uh, gun violence and rally. It will be again at St. Paul's on the Green with a walk towards Norwalk City Hall with speakers will be heard on the front steps of the concert hall. Public is invited and I think during these times that uh, we want to make sure our schools are safe that uh, it's incumbent upon as many people to come out as possible and have your voices heard. On Thursday, March 8th, the Norwalk Police Department will have its annual awards ceremony at 6 p.m. in the concert hall here in uh, City Hall. It's an opportunity for the police department to recognize all the um, good work by the officers during the past year. Uh, if you come out and listen to some of the things that they've done, I think you'd be rather impressed with uh, how uh, much they give each and every day that they're on duty. Uh, reminder that the third annual Norwalk St. Patrick's Day is coming. March, Saturday, March 10th, the parade steps off at 11 a.m. from Veterans Park. Mr. Kites. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A little bit of council business to get out of the way. 
Um, we want, we need to appoint by ordinance a two members of the council and or their designee to the arts commission. So our minority representative has chosen Emerson Strinidi as his designee. And I'm proud to uh, announce uh, one of our own, Chris Uranides. So all in favor of moving, uh, I'll move that as well. And all in favor of uh, Chris Uranides and Emerson Strinidi, please raise your hand if I signify yes. <coughs> Looks to be unanimous. <coughs> Great. Uh, now next up, Mr. Igneri will be reading the consent calendar this week in alphabetical order. I will be at the next council meeting. Mr. Ignary. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules to add two items to the agenda. Uh, item number one would be corporate counsel. Uh, it reads to approve the settlement of the Mish claim as set forth in the letter from corporate counsel's department. Item number two would be added to uh, health and welfare. And it will, oops, can't turn the page. And we'll read, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute an agreement with Firematic Supply Company for the purchase of one Pierce Enforcer Pumper for the Norwalk Fire Department for a total not to exceed $576,000. Accounts duly noted. Do I all in favor of suspending the rules to add those to the agenda? I think it is unanimous. With that, I'm going to read the consent calendar. And looking at the faces and seeing everyone that was up here talking, I think you know that if you hear an item that you're interested in on the consent calendar, that means it's going to be approved. And uh, that's the way we're going if you wanted to leave after that. So item 6A1, Board of Estimate and Taxation. Resolve that a sum not to exceed 20350 be in the same as hereby transferred from the contingency to the Code Enforcement Department to cover the purchase of a new Ford Escape for building inspections and other daily activities. Item, next item, items 7A1. Uh, I'm going to do one, two, and three are just for information purposes only. It's to accept and approve the report claims of the, of the uh, committee uh, for information purposes and uh, narrative on the tax collections, which are very good, I'll add. Uh, see, uh, for information purposes only, the monthly <coughs> tax collector's report was delivered. Item four, resolution. Approve a special capital appropriation in the amount of 66000 to increase the available funds for the purchase of a new fire engine and related accessories. The funds will be drawn from the balance in the capital fund. Item 5 on consent. Resolution. Approve the special capital appropriation in the amount of 167080 to increase available funds for roof replacement at the fire station located at 100 Fairfield Avenue. The funds will be drawn from the balance in the capital fund. Item six, resolution, authorizing the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute any and all documents to secure the repayment of a loan in the amount of $300,000 from the city of Norwalk to the sixth taxing district for the purpose of paying capital expenses related to the renovation of the district's community center for the fiscal years 17 and 18. Item seven, uh, resolution, approve a special appropriation in the amount of $13,462 to increase the fire department's Ford Explorer emergency vehicle purchase. The funds will be drawn from the balance in the capital account. Item seven B, one, Authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Thermo Scientific Portable Analytical Instruments uh, at 2 Radcliffe Road, Tweaksbury, Massachusetts, for one First Defender RMX S1 handheld chemical detection system 
for some not to exceed 43,050. Uh, the city of Norwalk is acting as a fiduciary for the regional hazardous materials team and will re be reimbursed through the emergency management and preparedness grant previously approved. Item number two, which was just read, uh, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute an agreement with Firematic Supply for the purchase of one Pierce enforcer pumper for the Norwalk Fire Department for a total not to exceed $576,000. Uh, item 7C, Recreation and Parks. Number one, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to enter into an agreement with Norwalk YMCA Camp Sunrise for their use of the Silvermine School Grounds for Camp 2018 to be held Monday, June 18th, 2018 through Friday, August 17th, 2018 from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Estimated attendance, 150. <clears throat> Item two, I'll authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Triangle Community Center for the use of Matthews Park for their Pride in the Park 2018 to be held Saturday, June 9th, 2018 from 12 noon to 8 p.m. Set up to take place Thursday, June 7th, 2018 with teardown no later than 11 p.m. on Saturday, June 9th. Estimated attendance, 2,500. Item three. Authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to enter into an agreement with the Project Purple 5K for the use of Calf Pasture Beach for the Purple Project 5K to be held on Saturday, May 12, 2018 from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Set up to take place at 6.30 a.m. on Saturday, May 12, 2018 with teardown no later than noon on Saturday, May 12, 2018, estimated attendance 250. Item C, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to enter into an agreement with Norwalk Carding Association for the use of Calf Pasture Beach for the spring and fall of 2018 season to be held at the following, to be held on the following dates from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Spring 2018 to March 17th, and 24th, April 1st, 7th, 14th, 21st, 28th, May 6th and 19th. Fall 2018, September 15th and 29th, October 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th, November 3rd, 10th and 17th. If on a rain day, Sunday may be available. Estimate, estimated attendance, 50 to 100. Item D. Ordinance approve revisions to paragraph 95-10 snow and ice removal from sidewalks. Item E land use and management. C authorize the mayor Harry W. Reeling to execute an agreement with Silver Petroselli and Associates for architectural design services for the 2018 Norwalk <coughs> High School Improvements Project for total not to exceed 97500 which includes an allowance for $25,000 for design services related to the preparation of the state grant application for 2019 reimbursable work. Accounts noted. Uh, item G, Public Works. Approve a temporary right of entry for CT dot and its agents to use property on Science Road while construction easement is being negotiated. That is the consent calendar. Good. All in favor of the consent calendar as read, please raise your hand and signify yes. Mr. Corsello, this would be unanimous. Thank you. All right, Mayor, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Kaidis. Uh, next item that will be voted on is item uh, 7A8. Uh, Mr. Burnett, but prior to Mr. Burnett um, bringing that issue forth, uh, we did have a conversation during our um, recess, and uh, we are going to be 
working uh, closely. I'll be contacting Dr. Adamowski and his finance staff, as well as working with me and my finance staff to see how we can um, reconcile some of the difference between where we are now and where we need to be. Uh, the Board of Estimate and Taxation uh, does have the authority to come back and ask the Common Council for an increase in any cap that they set. And um, we will be looking to see how we can work through this uh, situation where we can uh, come up with a solution and uh, make no mistake about it that the Common Council members did hear you tonight. Um, and uh, we have uh, committed to trying to work together to make that happen. So, Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Mayor. As a result of the meeting of the Finance Committee, we'd like to bring forward the following resolution. Whereas Section 1-289 of the NORC Charter requires that a majority of the Common Council vote to establish a specific spending limitation on locally funded expenditures during the process of establishing the next fiscal year's operating budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Norwalk that the maximum limit on total appropriations for the City of Norwalk for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018 shall be no more than $306,167,940. This appropriation. What, 68? Excuse me, what did I, I did not say that? 168. Let me repeat the number. Three hundred and thirty six million one hundred sixty eight thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. This appropriation cap represents total expenditures of three hundred and fifty three million five hundred ninety five thousand three hundred and sixty dollars less estimated intergovernmental grants of seventeen million four hundred and twenty six thousand. $420. Be it further resolved that the result of this vote and resolution, together with the attached 2018 2019 budget guide, be forwarded by the clerk of the city of Norwalk to the Board of Estimate and Taxation. Mr. Burnett has moved that item. Do you wish to comment on that, Mr. Burnett? Uh, the only comment I'd like to make that, in, in a, uh, as you stated, Mayor, earlier, and, and also in your um, comments coming out of the, um, uh, the recess, is that in addition to this um, resolution, which addressed, directly relates to the, the average mill rate increase, uh, we will be looking, the Finance Committee will be looking along with working with you and Finance Director for a, a special appropriation in the budget year 2017-2018 for $1.2 million to address the uh, SPED funding. So that is something we would look to have take place in the present budget, as well as uh, through the discussions of necessary uh, additional drawdowns if necessary from the fund balance. Further discussion? Mr. Hempstead. Yeah. Somebody's got to represent. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to I want to thank the mayor and uh, council majority leadership for at least inviting me in for a couple of the discussions about this and understanding that even though sometimes you're a single person, but you do have a voice and appreciate the conversations that we're able to have in, in that because um, as in committee, I, I supported this. I, I know the discussion came out on the SPED funding. Uh, Sped money coming out of the fund balance, which I totally agree with. Um, I think we're trying to make do the best we can because um, some p parents don't know, some people don't know the way, because we're an alliance district, uh, the way the law works, that any funding that we give the city this year or next year, we can never give them any less. All right, so if they ever hear a period of student population goes down or they don't stop the program, the city is still charged with giving the same amount of money. It's a penalty issue that uh, the state school system. I appreciate the passion that was in here tonight. I've been through a lot of these. Um, and uh, more than anybody, I get it. It's, it would be very nice to take some of this passion and drive to our state uh, House of Representatives and our state Senate, who continues after a dozen years of significantly underfunding our ECS funding. 
um, some of those um, cities that went up there on that thing get more money than we do. Danbury almost gets three times the amount of money. So they get three times per student the amount of money that Norwalk does. And it's time we take it to them. They had a chance to fix it before the courts got involved. The courts got involved. They overruled it. And right now they're not doing anything. Norwalk should be getting about $35 million and not about $12 million. But it's time they change the funding on how they treat Please. the city of Norwalk because our citizens don't have the incomes of those other towns around us. They do not. From those towns up there have average incomes of $250,000 uh, per individual. So I just wanted to get my usual frustration out with uh, how we get funded by the state. And nobody seems to complain that much when we get cut by the state, which we have been. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the resolution, please signify. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is uh, item 7F1. Uh, who from the Personnel Committee will be taking that? Uh, I will, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Stern. For a second, let him clear out. I know. I'm never getting married. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion for approval of revised grant coordinator communications manager position description and duties. Mr. Stern has moved item 7F1. Do you wish to comment on it, Mr. Stern? Um, this is the uh, this is the uh, grants coordinator communications manager position that's been back to the personnel committee a number of times, uh, and it was voted on last week to come to a full vote. I think that it makes sense with the departments. It is uh, adding communications responsibilities to the, uh, the current position, and that it is going to be done for less money. So I think all in all, it makes sense, and I am in favor. Further discussion? Mr. Hempstead. Surprise. No. I, I, I think my position on this has pretty, been pretty clear, so I'm not going to get into any of this. I'm just going to uh, suggest a, um, a um, an amendment to this uh, job description. Go to page two on qualifications profile. Second sentence, two years of grant writing. I'm, I'm looking to remove the word or equivalent. Experience is required, period, and remove the last sentence. And what is the last sentence? Could you read that for the record? It says equivalent combination of experience and or training may be considered. Mr. Uh, yeah, um, let me. I'd like to comment if, if you're finished. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to say I'm not going to support the amendment. Uh, I understand why you're making it. Uh, I think that the position already uh, requires grant writing or equivalent ex or equivalent experience. I, I, I'm okay with that because to me, the most important qualification for grant writer is the ability to communicate and write clearly and effectively. Not that they've simply filled out a some sort of grant in the past. So to me, it's unnecessary. It reduces the, the pool from which we can select an appropriate and the best candidate. So I'm not going to support this. Further discussion on the amendment? Okay, Mr. Hempstead has moved for an amendment to the job description. Uh, all in favor of that amendment, raise your hand. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Opposed. 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 Abstentions? The amendment fails. Uh, further discussion on item 7F1? Yeah. Mr. Livingston. Yeah, I, I just want to add um, just a couple comments. I'm going to support this position change because first and foremost, I think this is will result in a savings to the city. From what I understand, it's in the neighborhood of about $35,000. The position incorporates the duties and qualifications of a grant coordinator and the duties and qualifications of communications per person, so we get both. 
And, and there seems to be the notion out there that we need a full-time grant writer position in the mayor's office, but the experience has shown that there wasn't enough work to support the position. So to me, this gives us a chance to rectify the situation and save some money in the process. And I, I just want to add, because I did a little looking into this, um, for those who don't think the city has adequate uh, staff to support the grants, we currently have the equivalent of 3.5 full-time employees working on grants, and in this fiscal year, the city obtained over $3.1 million in grant funding. So I think we should just approve this and move on. Further discussion? Mr. Burnett. Yes, I'd just like to comment, Mayor, that, that it, move, moving this forward is a good thing. We're not adding additional headcount to um, the mayor's office because we're combining the, the roles. But we also have the flexibility of, of making change down the line as we see where the focus needs to be. So this is not a end-all, be-all situation. We can make adjustments as we go on, but if we don't start at some point, we'll never know what changes we need to make. So this is a start. Good point. Thank you. First, uh, any further discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just uh, would like to point out that uh, the, the need the city has for a communications director, and um, I think what happened last week at Norwalk High School is a really, really good example of why we need a coordinator um, in communications. There were a lot of rumors uh, falsely flying around that uh, sent parents into a panic. Uh, really unnecessarily, and I think if we had someone from the mayor's office on top of it right from the start uh, to communicate that to the parents when the police are taking over and their job is really not to assuage anyone's feelings but to make sure the kids are safe and they're not thinking about that. So um, I think that that's, a, that's good evidence why we really, really need a communications director. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ignari. To make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Sure.